Chapter 1, Basics of Summoning Arts Oh, that's right, I fell asleep before logging out, organizing the thoughts in his head. Kagami recalled having slept after getting the breakfast call. Kagami then pinched his forehead while looking up at the sky. He didn't know how long he had slept. However, he judged that it was unlikely to have been a long time because his little sister Mai had not woken him up yet. Shutting his eyes and then opening them widely to clear away the strong feeling of sleepiness, he found himself in the middle of a meadow enclosed by forest. Unknown flowers were scattered here and there, and over in the distance, a magnificent mountain range could be seen. And among the mountains now, several faintly shining silver towers could be seen peeking through. The scene was an already familiar one inside the game. Standing still in the meadow, he placed a hand on his jaw while a question came to mind. He did not notice the sense of incongruity at this time. For one thing, falling asleep in an online game was a famous saying. It is a saying indicating that an avatar that falls asleep in the so-called game will not show any reaction. Currently, after coming back from falling asleep to the present conditions, the expectation is that there was a problem with the system. VR equipment was designed to automatically shut down when falling asleep and cut off the power. However, the linked silver towers were visible among the mountains, no matter how you looked at it. There was no way for Kagami to have been mistaken, because out of the nine towers, one of them was his face. Was there a bug? While falling asleep may be an unusual event, he decided to stop thinking about it. It was because there was something else amiss, and no matter how he thought about it, that was way more important, namely, there was a fragrance. Whenever the wind blew, a grassy smell crossed under his nose giving off a sense of incongruity. VR technology had advanced so much that the sense of touch could be reproduced. Even as such, neither taste nor smell could be reproduced on a practical level currently. Yet, clearly his brain recognized the scent when he breathed through his nose. Then he attempted to tear off the grass at his feet and shoot it. The bitter and astringent taste spread throughout his mouth causing his expression to warp. He spat it out along with a large amount of saliva and wiped it with the back of his hand. His tongue was stimulated to an annoying level by the taste and even saliva was carefully reproduced. While thinking that he could not understand herbivores, he raised his head to examine the surroundings. In the vicinity of the enclosure, there were creatures that looked like children with blue ears and noses that wielded faintly shining knives. They were not blue in the face but rather had an actual blue face. Oh, that's right. He remembered that he had come to subjugate a horde of monsters near the national border. He figured he could leave all the thinking for when he was done cleaning them up. Its appearance had been seen many times since its beginner days. A standard monster called a goblin. It can't be helped that they were not a formidable enemy, but because it was his turn, he focused on the enemy. Summoning magic, Dark Knight. It was one of the first summoning skills he learned and it was also his favorite armor spirit summoning skill. Summoners used artificial spirits that dwelt in objects created by people and natural spirits that came from the natural world. Although natural spirits were the stronger of them, artificial spirits that dwelt in man-made objects were easier to use and get closer to. The Dark Knight he had summoned earlier was the soul of a soldier that had died in the battlefield which was now dwelling in a suit of armor. The spirits who stayed in armor that had been used by a person who fought for themselves became Dark Knights while the spirits that dwelled in armor used by those to protect others were called Holy Knights. Armor spirits belonged to the lower class summoning category. However, the Dark Knight that had been used for convenience continuously gained strength, comparable to that of a higher class summon. The grassy plains concealed the shining formation, and a knight with a large build gradually rose from it. The jet black armor radiated a cold chill, which shook the body with such an effect as that of a sinister black flame. There was no face, only two red lights that floated in the dark space. If one were to look back at the knight and see such an intimidating thing, a man would scream and run away. The sudden materialization of the unfamiliar knight caused the goblins to stop and raise their voices to intimidate it. Here, a sense of incongruity was born again, for a goblin to act in such a way should not be possible. Goblins had always been brave, not knowing their place, they would rush to kill whoever approached them. Now, no matter how you look at it, the goblins in front of him were feeling fear. However, it was no use worrying about it now, so he gave a cleaning command to the Dark Knight, and that place in the next instant turned into a massacre. Each time the black longsword flew, a storm was stirred and five to six goblins were reduced to chunks of meat scattered about here and there. The goblins' voices of intimidation gradually transformed into shrieks of despair. Even though some began to retreat from this hell, the Black Knight showed no mercy and completed the order of extermination. The affair lasted for no more than two or three minutes. The wind gently blew over the meadow that was now dyed in the blood of monsters. No one would think that the scene of the massacre right before them was an illusion. Were there about 100 goblin corpses scattered about? Little by little, he composed himself in the midst of the scene and reconsidered everything that had caught his attention. The taste and smell and then the memory of the goblin's actions. Was this perhaps? He arrived at one answer. Did it finally come? The third update. Indeed, he couldn't believe it immediately. In order to reproduce the five senses, research was being carried out on the worldwide level. Though it was unbelievable that such technology would leap ahead to be used in a game, there was no other explanation that made sense. As one would expect, Arc Earth Online's management always surpassed expectations. Most likely, the reason that falling asleep did not activate a shutdown was because of the version update. After coming to an understanding, he turned his gaze to a sign of something approaching the meadow from deep within the forest. He was able to roughly grasp the direction and number because of a skill from his second job and that skill is life sensing. The problem was that it could not distinguish between allies and enemies. The number that appeared numbered around 50. He expected that it was goblin reinforcements. The Dark Knight stood silently next to Kagami, surrounded by 100 silent bodies. Even if 50 goblins from the famous elite unit had come, it wouldn't pose a problem. It was to be expected of one of the nine sages to be able to deal with them swiftly. Gradually, the signs grew louder and sounds of marching could be heard clearly. Goblins did not march in groups and would probably not march in order. If that held true, 
There was a high possibility that these weren't the signs of goblins, since the subjugation of the demons near the area of the national border was complete. He returned the Dark Knight. At the same time, the vanguard appeared from within the forest. It was an order of knights. Engraved on their shields was their national coat of arms which showed a large tree with a moon that signaled that they belonged to the Archite Kingdom. It was the Archite Magic Knights. They had those characteristic features on their armor and shields. The armor that reflected light like that of a mirror which blended in with the views of the surroundings. And, the shield that boasted a high defense against the breath of monsters. Although it was an elite order among the knights which belonged to the Archite Kingdom. He wondered why they would be this close to the border. There was little doubt that the person at the head of the vanguard was the knight commander. The following knights were held back with one hand and he took a step forward. The knight commander's hair was in a swept back style that had a small quantity of white hair mixed among the black. The many scars on his visage were evidence of his long military service. The red mantle he wore around his back was proof of a commander. He was an elegant and handsome man, but not to the level of Dan Bolf. This was a fierce battle. What on earth happened here? Did you happen to see anything, little girl? Dot. Dot. The commander spoke those words while looking at Kagami. But because of his choice of words, Kagami was sure he couldn't have been talking to him. So he turned to look around him, finally coming to the conclusion that the commander probably had the ability to see spirits. However, the problem was that he was actually unable to see the spirit. The magician class was able to see every kind of spirit and the warrior class was only able to see fighting spirits. Even though he was very much a magic knight, a knight was still a knight. It was a warrior class. Dan Bilf was an elder of the Silver Link Towers and a summon master. There should not have been a spirit visible to a warrior class that was invisible to him. It must have been scary for a little lady like you to be in such a place as this. But worry not, you are safe now. While saying that, the commander places his hand gently on Kagami's head. Relax, we magic knights have arrived, we will ensure your safety. Dot? What? Kagami was astonished. Dan Bilf was created by himself to be a solemn man of about the height of 190 centimeters. There was no more humiliation than to be treated as a child and comforted. More than anything, he could not hide his surprise that he was looking up at the commander. When subtracting Dan Bilf's height, was this commander a giant or something? He thought that there was enough of a difference in height to make it seem like it. And just now, to call Dan Bolf a little lady, with a manner full of dignity, he shook off the hand placed on his head and glared at the knight. What little lady? What fool do? You. He looked around for the source of a bell-like voice, including the captain in front of him. There was no one around that could have sounded like a girl. You seem to be upset, little lady. Here have some water. Can you drink? Once again saying little lady, the commander held out a leather bag that contained water. His facial expression made it clear he was worrying wholeheartedly, no matter how one looked at it. The commander didn't seem to be the type to utter jokes while smiling. Based on that thought, Kagami lowered his gaze. His eyes were glued to the armor of the commander at the same time. This, again, a pretty voice reached his ears. What kind of joke is this? The order of the Magic Knight's official equipment, the clear mirror armor. The surface reflected light like a mirror. It could be said it was already a mirror in itself. His appearance was reflected. When his right hand moved the left hand moved as well. There was no confusion. The girl that was reflected on the armor of the commander matched his actions. It could no longer be called imitation, but the same body. And that girl had a familiar appearance as well. The silver hair that came down to her waist. The strong-willed eyes. The look of innocence on her face. Those slightly red cheeks. And that tiny nose. Only the equipment that Dan Bolf was wearing at the time was intact. Clearly only the contents had changed. It was the girl he had built as his ideal woman using the vanity case. Chapter 2 Exposed Preference Why did this happen? In Kagami's head, in order to fully recall the memory he had before he had awoken, he went at full throttle. Meanwhile, the commander who was distracted by the girl's confused appearance, summoned together his subordinates. He split several of his subordinates up into groups to search for and to exterminate the remnants of this terrible spectacle. He also directed a search for an acquaintance of the girl. The appearance that Kagami saw, was that of his ideal female image that he had created at the time. What on earth is this? Thinking back on his memory, he was sure that when he completed his ideal female image that he did not save it. He had cancelled it and then logged out. He could not recall anything more. He felt that he did it before he logged out. He had a hunch that he had cancelled it before he had slept. Furthermore, he was sure that he had cancelled it. He remembered that he had been called to breakfast, but from then on, his memory grew hazy. Kagami made up his mind to open up the status screen by operating the bracelet terminal menu. At the bottom of the display, various information about the avatar was displayed. Name, Dan Bolf Gandador Class, Summoner, Sage, Affiliation, Archite Kingdom Job, Silverlink Tower Elder, Summoner, HP, 1210-1210 MP, 4394-390, Strength, 5 plus 20 Stamina, 6 plus 15, Mana, 51 plus 10 Dexterity, 7 plus 15, Agility, 6 plus 37. There did not seem to be any problems. Nothing seems to be missing, nor had he logged in with a different avatar. It was the status of Dan Wolf that he had for over four years. Although the numerical values might look low compared to other games, there was a large difference between one point of status in this game. The general strength and stamina of an adult male were four. In other words, with a strength stat of eight, a person would have two times the strength of an average adult male. A person that has the strength stat of ten could be considered an expert soldier. When Kagami displayed the following page of the status screen, his shoulders dropped and his hope had been completely lost. Head, Moonlight Stone Circlet. Neck, Arc Exile Super C Necklace. Abdomen, Sage's Rope, Summoner. Arms, Almighty Gloves. Legs, Sage's Rope, Summoner. Feet, Pegasus Boots. Ring Finger, Mars Ring. There was no problem so far. The equipment was top tier. Incidentally, 
This equipment was awarded to him by the king of the Archai Kingdom when he became an elder of the Silver Link Towers. This equipment was custom made by the leading craftsman players exclusively for Danbolf. The problem was the avatar display. On the status screen was the figure of a girl that he had created himself wearing the equipment. Up until now, a dignified Dan Bolf had shown his imposing appearance here. What was this? Kagami began rolling up the hem of his robe and watched as the part of the equipment column in the status screen which showed abdomen and legs changed to empty. After ascertaining the exposed body while playing with his robe with one hand, he coiled a finger to feel the texture of the gently fluttering supple silver hair around him. There was enough breasts that it spilled out from his small palms, and his skin was a fair porcelain color. He had two modestly plump legs that stretched from a reserved butt. It was not a mistake. This was the body that he had made as a manifestation of his ideal that was made possible with a vanity case. At this point, Kagami's preferences were exposed. Oof i.e. Oi oi oi. What do you think you are doing? The commander grew panicked at the sight of a girl's body and wrapped his red mantle around it in order to cover it. In addition, the surrounding knight's gazes lingered for but an instant on the immodest girl's appearance before they steeled themselves and looked away. Good grief. A young lady should not show their body off like that. Although it is not a problem as my knights are sincere and honest people, one should not be careless in this regard. You need not react excessively to this. Although Kagami thought so. Whether or not these knights were all players or not he admired their reactions. It was possible for a player that had enough fame to have NPC attendants. Though Kagami thought that the surrounding knights were the commander's attendants, he judged that he was wrong. This was because NPCs should not react that way. Although Kagami did not want to admit it, as regretful as it was, she decided to accept the current situation. Where did she go wrong? The fact of the matter was that she had confirmed the character reset. This was most certainly because of the upgrade. Given this conclusion, she had decided to buy another vanity case in order to restore her appearance. Even though it was only 500 yen, she had to buy 1,000 yen. Adults were dirty, squirming about under the mantle in order to put on her robes. She once again checked the status screen and confirmed that the avatar on the menu had the sage's robe, summoner, equipped. Is that an operator's bracelet? Was the young lady an adventurer? The commander who was trying to put on the returned mantle muttered this as he looked at the arm of a girl. The operator's bracelet. They were words that were unfamiliar to Kagami. There was no doubt that the item the commander was referring to was the terminal, as it was evident in his gaze. However, there was no need for him to ask about it. As long as one were a player, anyone would have this. It was a funny question because adventurers referred to players anyways. The Order of Knights was an elite magic unit, thus it was unlikely for him to be an amateur player. How many decent players would be curious enough to join a small kingdom such as the Archive Kingdom anyways? Kagami doubted that they had never seen one before. If you were to inquire whether I was an adventurer, I would say that I am. She had not yet grown accustomed to her own voice. It was too sweet of a voice, a tone that until now had a sense of discomfort for her. He had started with a formal tone of voice to suit Dan Wolf from the start of the game. As a matter of course, Kagami began to roleplay to fit his dignified appearance. Now that it had been four years, he was accustomed to his tone of voice already. Familiarity was a frightening thing. It felt out of place with her appearance of a girl on the surface. Her unwillingness to change her tone of voice was something of a mystery. It was not possible for her to change it so suddenly. However, it was not particularly troubling. Thus she abandoned the idea to change her tone of voice. Is that so? You were an adventurer? You came to hunt with friends and encountered this mob of hobgoblins? What misfortune? Hobgoblin? She said that while looking around. Her neck felt heavy with the pull of her hair. This was because her hair was contained within the rope at the time. Immediately noticing this, she brushed her hair upwards. After that, looking at the scattered corpses, she recalled that it was like that. Hopgoblins were a subspecies of goblins that inhabited places such as the mines, and that they were much stronger than normal goblins because of the metal weapons they used. Goblins were green and hobgoblins were blue. Recalling this, she nodded. However, for Dan Bolf, the difference was negligible. Don't worry. Your companions will surely be found. The commander continued to encourage her. Players who would go so far for thorough roleplay were unusual. However, there was no meaning even if she was encouraged. There are no companions. I am the only one. I see. So the young lady was alone. Well then, did you happen to see the adventurers who defeated the hobgoblins? An adventurer with this much ability. We'd like to thank them by all means. At this time, Kagami decided to show off the Dark Knight. If that was the case, it was simple to show them. This is the person who did this. With a word summoning magic, Dark Knight. A black knight appeared close by when the skill was activated. This. This is? What is this guy? The surrounding knights became vigilant and whipping out their swords while taking some distance. This is. Is this by chance the art of summoning? That's right. This guy cleared away the monsters. When the commander heard the words of the girl, he instructed the surrounding knights to stow away their swords. With a look of admiration, he looked up at the black knight. This guy is a rare summon. Was this young lady the summoner? This guy is a rather formidable swordsman. Although armor spirit summons weren't unusual. Perhaps the reason why the commander said such a thing was that it was rare for a summoner to use such a low-class summon nowadays, so it could be said to be unusual in a sense. Yes, this is a favorite summon of mine. Aside from that, why are the elite magic knights in this sort of place? Leading a company of elite knights near the border could cause a bad misunderstanding to neighboring countries, for example. The Archite Kingdom did not like aggressive wars. The Order of Knights acted as military strength for national defense. Kagami did not know the reason why such a valuable strength was dispatched. In the first place, 
Kagami who is an elder of the Silver Link Tower should have heard of big movements in neighboring countries. Ah, information that monsters have moved to the vicinity of the border arrived, and we were dispatched for a subjugation mission. The subjugation of the demons in the vicinity of the border. This was a duty that Kagami had just completed. If it was the people of the Archive Kingdom, all of them were supposed to know of the duty system. Then how come the elite commander of this country didn't know? The doubt passed through Kagami's mind again. I guess you might not have heard of it since you're an adventurer. Ten years ago, there was a war with the demons who fell from the sky. It was called the Defense of the Three Gods Countries. Ever since then, the rate at which herds of monsters appear has increased almost twice. Ten years ago. What? So you don't know it? Hmm. Well, it was ten years ago so you must have been two or three years old back then, young lady. No wonder. In the first place, even closed beta had not begun a decade ago. The time in Ark Earth Online was the same as in real time. Kagami had not heard of the story of a fierce battle with demons in the setting. At the start of the game, the Ark calendar was September 1, 2112. It was the same as the date on Earth. And it was now September 14, 2116. In the Ark calendar, which was four years from the start, it was impossible for it to have been a decade ago, even in the Ark calendar. 